In this video, we're talking about the intermediate value theorem, and we're just going to introduce the idea. Sometimes you'll see the intermediate value theorem abbreviated as IVT. But the intermediate value theorem is one of those things that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. The reason that we have it as a theorem is because sometimes it can be helpful to prove that a function has a solution or a root on a specific range. We'll talk about that more a little bit later on in the video, but first, let's talk about what the intermediate value theorem actually tells us. So first, let's start with a couple of things that this theorem assumes. We have here the interval, the x interval a to b. So the left hand side of the interval we're interested in is a, the right hand side of the interval is b. So we have this closed interval a, b, and the interval has to be closed. So the intermediate value theorem assumes that you have some interval a to b and that it's a closed interval. It also assumes that f of x, which we've graphed here in green, this is just some linear function, and doesn't matter what the function looks like, but that the function f of x is continuous on the interval a to b. So there can be some discontinuity in the function outside of the interval, either to the left of a or to the right of b. But as long as it's continuous between x equals a and x equals b, then we can use the intermediate value theorem. So we have the interval a to b, it's a closed interval. f of x is continuous on that interval a to b. Now if we assume those two things, then here's what the intermediate value theorem tells us. Obviously if we take x equals a and we trace up until we hit the graph and then we go over to the left until we hit the y-axis, whatever value we arrive at along the y-axis is going to be the value of the function at a. In other words, here x is equal to 1, so we have a equals 1. If we plug x equals 1 into f of x, we're going to get f of 1. And f of 1 in this case looks like it's about 0.75. So let's say that's about 0.75. And the specific values are not important. I'm just using real numbers to make this a little bit easier to understand. So we have this value x equals 1. If we plug it into the function, the value we get back is f of a, which in this case is about 0.75. We also have this value here, b, which in this case happens to be 3. And if we plug b equals 3 into the function, or x equals 3 into the function, what we get is f of b, or f of 3. And that looks like it's about 2. So this is going to be equal to 2. Now what the intermediate value theorem tells me is that I can pick any value here, k, any value y equals k. So it has to be some value between f of a and f of b. So in other words, f of a has to be less than or equal to k, which has to be less than or equal to f of b. In other words, k is between f of a and f of b. So it's some y value between f of a and f of b. If my function f of x were decreasing instead of increasing, I could also have the opposite scenario where f of b was going to be less than or equal to k, which was going to be less than or equal to f of a. Either one will work. The point is that k is sitting between f of a and f of b. Whatever values f of a and f of b happen to have, k is between them along the y-axis. Now the intermediate value theorem says that I can pick any value of k as long as it's between f of a and f of b. So it could be really, really close to f of b up here at the top of the interval, or it could be really, really close to f of a down here at the bottom of the interval, or right about in the middle where I have it. It can be anywhere in between f of b and f of a. As long as it's between them, then the intermediate value theorem proves that this corresponding point here, C, and I'll circle it just to be clear, that this corresponding point, C, is going to exist, and that C has to be greater than or equal to A, and at the same time, less than or equal to B, which, in other words, just means that C has to be between A and B. So again, if I have a closed interval, A, B, and my function f of x is continuous over that entire interval a, b, and I pick some value of k that's in between f of a and f of b along the y-axis, then the intermediate value theorem guarantees to me that there is going to be some point x equals c, some value x equals c, that sits between a and b. In other words, as long as k is inside of this interval, then c is going to be inside of this interval. And that's what's guaranteed to me by the intermediate value theorem. 
Now the reason that that's helpful is because we can use the intermediate value theorem to prove that a function has a root or a solution inside of an interval. In other words, that the function at some point inside of the interval is equal to zero. Sometimes we don't know what a solution is going to be, but we want to show that a function has a solution inside the interval a to b, and the intermediate value theorem allows us to do that because what it says is, let's say for example we have this function f of x, and we have the interval a, b, so we have x equals a and x equals b, this closed interval, and we can show that f of x is continuous over the interval a to b. Well, if we can show that f of a, here this value, is negative, and right now this looks like it's about negative 0.75, so if this value here is negative, and if f of b is positive, this looks like it's about 2, then the intermediate value theorem tells me that the function has to be equal to 0 at some point, because I can pick this value k, right, and k happens to be greater than or equal to f of a, and at the same time less than or equal to f of b, and if I know that f of a is a negative number, in this case let's say it's negative 0.75, and I know f of b is a positive number, in this case let's say it's 2, then of course I'm going to be able to pick a value k equals 0, because 0 is greater than a negative number and less than a positive number. The intermediate value theorem guarantees to me that there's going to be this point, x equals c, right here, inside of my interval a, b, that creates this k equals zero value. So again, the conclusion is, if I have a closed interval a to b, and f of x is continuous on that interval, as long as I can show that f of a is negative, and that f of b is positive, then the intermediate value theorem guarantees to me that there is going to be some value c inside of my interval a, b, so between a and b, where k is going to be equal to zero, or where the function is going to have a value of zero, and therefore it guarantees to me that there is going to be some point at which the function crosses the x-axis, and therefore has a solution, or a root, at that point.